tools, including A and B, for five minutes. But again, we go around the whole system. It's tested as a whole system, and it's all got to work in terms of the post, the clamp bars, the mesh, to make sure that we can't gain entry through that product with the tools in the time. And in terms of entry and the failure criteria, when it comes to a fence, it's about an elliptical test block. That represents human entry through the product. Okay, Chris. So Chris has picked up the uh, a, a cutters here. And again, we're just looking at different methods to make sure that we can't make an aperture to get that body blocked through. And I have to stress, approval of certification to a level 75 isn't about saying you can't get through the product. Clearly, if you turn up with a massive grinder, then you're going to get through. But it's about giving confidence and, and uh, um, statements to say that that product will resist that amount of time with those tools so that specifiers and end users know exactly what they're buying and they know what resistance it's going to achieve. So when we're doing a test program, we're looking at all elements. So again, it's not, if this is an A1 fence, which it is, it's not just one attack for one minute, we'll be using different methods. So Chris is now going to pick up the uh, knife and the lever. Away you go, Chris. And again, remember, noise is not an issue. And the knife's broken. Okay. Too much effort, Chris. So obviously that's looking at the mesh, but we look at shearing the uh, uh, fixings. We've been trying to cut the clamp bars, and we work around all the system to make sure that we can't get through. The one thing we don't do on fences is climb over. Uh, there are minimum height requirements uh, uh, within the standard. So eight tools, the minimum height of a fence will be 1.8, and then it goes up from there as you go up the tool. Okay, Chris. We invite the uh, clients to witness all the testing. It's important to them that they see. It's important to us that they see what we do and learn from it. We do not design products. We only test them. We're completely independent from the design and the, the manufacturing process. But obviously, if they're witnessing, they can see the types of tests we do. 95% of what we test fails first time. Now, if we've done 30 tests on that uh, fence specimen and one particular test fails, then effectively we haven't got the data to then go on to the next part of the approval process. So they can modify that product, bring it back for testing, uh, even within the same test program sometimes, because we do do the testing at people's factories, that is a possibility. And if we tested something that's broken, they can re-engineer that while we're looking at something else. So that's where the partnership comes in, them watching us do what we do, and learning and using that data to develop their product and to make it more secure if necessary. Necessary. So coming away from the A1 fence, we're going to jump up a bit to tool catcher we see. Again, the methodology is exactly the same. We're just using bigger tools and we've got more time. So we work around the product. You'll see here this is the double mesh layer, so already we're getting greater resistance. Chris has picked up the category, I uh, think, B tool uh, cutters, or category B cutters. But actually, just because you've got bigger tools doesn't mean they're more effective. It's all about the product configuration. So sometimes, actually, we do use the smaller tools uh, to attack a, a higher rated product because actually it becomes more efficient. Yeah. <laughs> As you'll see, some, some of the methods are quite noisy, some aren't. Uh, but again, we're working around the system. Moving up to uh, the catalog C. I'm going to move out the way. There you go, Chris. Just trying each method. So uh, we've got the hand axe there at Catchy C. We've also got the cold chisel. We're trying to find the optimum time to get in. But we don't assume just because we've got some knowledge of the tools or quite a lot of knowledge of the tools, we don't assume that just because we think that's going to be the quickest that it is. So we'll keep going. We get uh, preliminary data to make sure uh, or find out how much we can cut, say, within one minute. Extrapolate that out until we're absolutely comfortable that we haven't got a methodology that uh, we can get through the. Uh, system. Uh, Chris, I think we can stop there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hopefully that's given you a flavour of what we do under the LPCB banner. Uh, a big thank you to Chris uh, for his hard effort. Thank you very much. Uh, if there's any questions, please go and talk to one of the team. And Amos and Mark are just on.